We have a guest in studio, and of course, we want them also to weigh in on this. Dr. Boni Halwale also is a medical doctor, and of course, this is really right up his alley. And we do have also uh, Aaron Chiriot with us, who's a senator of Kiricho, to talk about this as well. Aaron, you came out uh, defending also the suspension of the CEO of Kenyatta National Hospital. Just let's, let's listen into that particular clip before we also embark on our discussion this morning. In the last six financial years, Kenyatta National Hospital has never received any funding in terms of development vote, so they are understaffed and underfunded. When you're running an organization where you're understaffed and underfunded, the kind of messes that have been witnessed for those that are genuine, like the mistake that happened, which is really unfortunate, on Friday, are born to happen. So if you, we are understaffed, then that is a stock excuse for malpractice and, uh, you know, a total of negligence. Let's hear from you, Senator. Well, uh, thank you, Dibal, and good morning to our viewers this morning. The point that uh, uh, we're making in that press conference, and which is what I still want to buttress this morning, is that uh, when you're running an organization the size of Kenyatta National uh, Hospital, uh, then one of the things that you would expect uh, a respectable uh, institution of this magnitude to constantly receive is funding first to take care of uh, inflation because uh, there are challenges when uh, each and every day to run uh, that institution. There are things, of course, you've got equipment that are uh, getting old and um, also you've got to take care of uh, new staff that you're recruiting. But Kenyatta National Hospital, to the best of my knowledge, in the last uh, six or so financial years, hasn't received a single additional coin to either cater for uh, new development in terms of uh, spacing, because you've just had the numbers that have been mentioned by the chair of uh, KPMDU, if I got that uh, tag correctly, and also uh, new uh, recruitment, because you, if the numbers are increasing, then you'd expect that the number of uh, nurses that attend to these patients will, uh, addition, will also be added. But this uh, has not happened. This is not to excuse uh, the, neglig the cases of negligence that you keep on hearing uh, mm. in, the, in the media. Because it's really unfortunate when, you know, one of the things that I've always had uh, this friend of mine here, Bonnie, uh, say is that uh, medical doctors have got very little room for mistakes and when they are being uh, tested mm -hmm. unlike the rest of the uh, professions where failure is when um, you fail maybe up to 20 40 or 50 percent of the exam for medical doctors even one single mistake you'd rather not give an answer than give a wrong answer because in uh, their practice on a day-to-day -day, uh, living they are handling human life are like the rest of us all. So uh, the, the point is, and the, the, the point that we continue to make is that what we expected uh, Cabinet Secretary Cecilia Karioki to have done is to walk to KNH and say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I've just been appointed Cabinet Secretary in charge of uh, health. And uh, like any other Kenyan, I'm extremely concerned because we've been hearing of all these uh, cases, uh, the rape saga, the children being stolen, and now this uh, case of uh, negligence happening here. Please give me a brief. What is happening? And it would have been uh, proper of the management because KNH is run by a board, and it's a huge organization. And they'd have given her the update and said, "This is where we feel as an institution we have gone wrong. This is what has caused uh, all these challenges." And as an administrator, as a properly uh, in office cabinet sector, somebody with a gumption of leadership and who wants to take charge would have done is to say, so what do you expect of us as government to provide uh, you with so that you can serve Kenyans with dignity and we can do away with all these cases that you have been hearing? And they exchange a list of demands, say suppliers with enough, uh, give us enough funding to maybe uh, get additional uh, space, give us enough funding to uh, get on board. Uh, more members of staff and that kind of thing. And in return, the cabinet secretary will say, okay, while I, we provide that, this is what we do not expect of Thank you. Thank you. You but, know? Yes. But unfortunately, what did she choose to do? She decided to fall uh, victim of the hue and cry of the public where when 
members of uh, the senior government institutions, when you when there's a lot of uh, noise in your institution, instead of getting to the real heart of a matter, you decide to throw one person under the bus so as to appease the masses. This is a sign of weak leadership, and that is what we are not going to support. Please, if we want to sort uh, the mess, and I like uh, the words of uh, Dr. Olwoch, uh, he closed it. It is time that we re looked at KNH and say, do we really want it to continue being our national and regional referral uh, center? If you want it to be, then there is so much that okay. needs to be changed. All right, let's say from Dr. Khalwale. This, the recent events and the cascades, of course, of uh, you know, so many things happening at Kenyatta National Hospital, uh, uh, loss of children uh, being stolen as well. We had also uh, the, this particular incident that capped it all. We are always waiting for another shoe to drop. I don't know what will come next. Nobody knows. <laughs> I, I think uh, listening to the distinguished sen senator from Caricho, uh, one can only say, uh, we are walking into very uh, into a very dangerous future where any elected member of parliament becomes a specialist on everything simply because they are elected. I was expecting the good senator to say this is a fairly technical area. Uh, I expect that uh, before she took her decision, uh, Minister Sicily Kariuki consulted but to go ahead and blast her simply because he enjoys the privilege of being in Senate is unfortunate. Now, very many good things happen at Kenyatta National Hospital and many other hospitals and they are not reported. Unfortunately, that is how medicine is. The good things you do rarely catch the attention of the public is only when a mistake is made. Just two, less than two months ago, uh, Professor Stanley Hainga led uh, a team of uh, plastic surgeons to restore a hand that has been um, had amputated uh, by, uh, from a, a little boy, and even the president sent a congratulatory me message saying that the professionals at Nyara Hospital were doing a good job. So there's something good going on there. Now, the issue at hand, who is to blame? There were two people who had been immediately affected. The first one was the lead surgeon, who in this unfortunate instant uh, is taking responsibility, and the second one is the CEO. I want to congratulate whoever made the decision of stopping the CEO from working. And I want to urge them to review the decision of uh, punishing the doctor who led the operation team for these reasons. The CEO had to go, my brother Senator, because of political and administrative responsibility. Here is a CEO who has been in a hospital that has been exposing patients to radiotherapy using a machine which expired 19 years ago, a radiotherapy uh, machine. She didn't make a move. Here is a CEO who has presided over incidences of patients being raped. Here is a CEO who is presiding over a hospital where mothers die in labor. We call it maternal mortality. Here is a CEO who is in charge of a hospital where babies are stolen. And here is a CEO who presides over an institution where wrong patients are operated on for the wrong procedure. That is enough for the lady to go and let her go and go for good. Now, why do I defend the doctor? There has been an attempt in the media to say the head surgeon was a student. The reason why they are putting in the word student is to give the impression that the guy was not qualified. For God's sake, a doctor who is a registrar is not an ordinary student. He's already a qualified doctor, but he is understanding 
a consultant in a specific field and before you are allowed to go and do any surgery by your consultant he's sufficiently comfortable that you are capable of carrying out that particular operation so the doctor the registrar who was in charge should not be punished for something which was purely procedural by the time you go to operate a patient you prepare yourself from a preparing room we call it a scrapping room draping room you move from that room when you're completely sterile and you find the patient is already in theater covered including the face you can't recognize the patient you are aware that somebody had prepared that patient so what led to this mistake was not the doctor it was the process of preparing the patient to come to theater how did the process, the process fail? Because the administration in the ward, the administration in the hospital, and therefore the CEO failed. There is a process of identifying a patient. If you allow the hospital to be over congested, you allow the hospital to be understaffed, then you run the risk of sending the wrong patient to theater because of the process of identification. Mm -hmm. What then happened is that we have little girls there mm -hmm. in blue. Uh, people who have gone to Kenyatta have seen. We have little girls there, students of MTC in mm -hmm. blue. Uh, so because the nurse is alone and she's in charge of a hundred patients, some of them requiring emergency things, vomiting, <coughs> collapsing, and whatnot, the nurse tells the little girl, ensure that that patient who was supposed to go to theater is ready. So the nurse who would otherwise have labeled that patient meticulously is forced to refer that to this little student and the student doesn't give, doesn't give it the seriousness it deserves. So if the CEO had staffed that hospital sufficiently, if they had decongested the wards so that the nurse is in charge of a manageable number of patients, mm -hmm. this mistake would not have taken place. And I beg uh, my brother Cherion, don't argue with me on this one. Uh, because if you do, uh, the, the gods of your grandfather might curse you that you end up under my you, surgical knife. You, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Please don't go there. You know, one of the, one of the, things, one of the things we used to say to Bal mm -hmm. uh, when Bonnie was our colleague last parliament is that if you ever go to a hospital and you are told that the attending surgeon is one Dr. Bonnie Alwale, would you accept to live with the challenge you have or would you, would you face a scalpel under him? And 99% of people will say, I'd rather remain with the challenge than face <laughs> Boni Halwale. Because, you know, let me tell you something, uh, Boni. Why, why, why I disagree with you? If I was arguing with you about medical procedure, then I'd be a fool. Because that's not an area that I have any experience whatsoever on. But we are purely arguing on management practices. You know, the kind of argument you're pushing, uh, Senator Boni, the reason why I wouldn't agree with, uh, with you is that you're trying to make it look like when you have a hotel, it's only a chef who's qualified to be the head of that institution. You're victimizing uh, Madam uh, Lily Koros and saying that uh, all these uh, kind of challenges that the understaffing that you've talked about, the nurses that are not uh, acting up uh, but properly. But highlights, uh, you know, a machine uh, that has been, you know, for 19 good 19 years, years that has expired. This lady, you, you can't challenge uh, people. Yes. This lady has been in charge of KNH for three years out of the 19. For another 16, there were other people. What do you do? You have Kenyans lining up. Have you seen the line of people uh, that queue up at Kenyatta for radiotherapy? It's a crisis. That's why we need to speak up against these things. And we are saying the solution is not to send the CEO away. The solution is to speak and have an honest discussion as Kenyans but and issues say... Of, issues of management is really coming me, to the fore. Uh, yeah, you issues know, of talk take. What do you do, yeah, what do, you you do Dibal? You, you're actually operating or having some you know, expired equipment that are still you know, being what, used in the What hospital. do you do because... What, what was she expected? What was she, she supposed to do? To retire the machine. How do you retire it? You've raised, you've raised the concerns with the relevant ministry. She, has, she doesn't have a budget of her own. No. But if we are no, talking no, no, about in, me, an institution... Let me ask you a simple question. If you have medicine in the hospital that have expired, mm -hmm. mm. 
will you actually be prescribing this medicine to you know exactly. the patients because exactly. they've expired and now you've not raised the, the concern of the minister first of all that's no, a fallacious argument no, no, do you no, know no, why no, 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 do you know why what is so uh, do what, you know why it's a fallacious you know, argument no let me let me finish is, my, is, my is dr boni haluale no, let me finish my train of thought yes the question is again what, what is dramatically different with the with the equipment that have expired this the radiotherapy uh, uh, equipment listen and listen why i'm telling you that is a fallacious argument is boni haluale this morning, telling us that uh, the head of uh, say radiotherapy at Kenyatta National Hospital is a complete fool and idiot because he is a technical person in charge and has been exposing Kenyans to a radiotherapy machine that should have been retired 19 years ago. He wants to mislead us. You cannot compare the same. What you're saying is basically, this is a machine that should not have been used Right. Because maybe the technology Dr. is Halloale, outdated. So do, do, do you have any evidentiary evidence on this that you've raised that particular well, machine well, and expired? Yes, yes. yes. It's, it's a fact. It is, it is, it is a known fact. I'm a, I'm a it was in the newspaper. <laughs> I am, I am a it's a known fact. So you agree? I it's agree with fact. him. But the point that I don't it's agree with him is this, that uh, on this uh, decision squarely, if the madam, if madam CEO was here today and say, I have written my budgetary but the uh, question request. Is, how can you argue with facts? You, you know, Dibal, don't, don't clog your mind. No, no, I'm not clogging my mind. I'm just Listen, asking. The it's point a fact is, that you're saying, you, I mean, you, this particular machine had been operated with, a, you know, a qualified radiotherapist. Yes. So the question is... Uh, so <laughs> he knows the machine has expired. Between, 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 you know how, you know how an institution ran, uh, Dibal? When you have an institution of the magnitude, say, of uh, Kenyatta National Hospital, when you're doing, say, your, 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 your budgetary quotas for the next financial year, what you do is that you get requests from, say, the department that is in charge of uh, orthopedics, and they say, this is what uh, we, we are lacking in this institution. The next will be maybe uh, these uh, people that are in charge of radiotherapy. If can you I have help? written as a CEO yes. to can the I ministry, help, yes. a simple question, Bonnie. Mm. If you have written to the ministry and say, we have a machine that is outdated, please organize for funds so that we can buy a new one. And there is no funds that are forthcoming. What was the CEO supposed to have done? Let me help you. What was she supposed to have done? Let me help you, Mashma. Yes. Uh, you rich people, you, not uh, rich, you, uh, you, 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 you like flying. Okay? Uh -huh. Supposing you go to the airport and there is an aircraft which is satisfied to have outlived its self life, that it cannot fly. Mm -hmm. Would you comfortably board that aircraft? Of course I cannot. I can assure you this radiotherapy machine is not different from that aircraft. Mm -hmm. That aircraft is ordinarily retired. Mm -hmm. And the CEO is the one who makes the final decision that this aircraft cannot carry passengers. That's not true, Bonnie. Hey, can I? Can yeah, I? Just let, let, let him finish. Do, do, don't be anxious. So if it is because of tribalism, thanks to this cancer in Kenya, mm -hmm. that is pushing you to take this position, please give us a better person from your community who can save lives in Kenya. And I can assure you, whether some people like it or not, the CEO of Kenyatta National Hospital must be a qualified doctor of medicine. That is too highly complicated an area. You can't do an experiment of picking a girl from I don't know where, simply because she knows management. No, doctors, and I am one of them, we are deliberately trained in management. Are you in final year? That's why. Because they expect that is why. That, uh, that is finish. why I say. Please, the please. arguments. No, no, they are patient, let, man. Let, 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 let him finish. Okay. This, these are matters of life and death. Yes. Okay. The reason why this CEO is being protected at KNH is because of competition for tenders. Politicians or people who are politically correct have access to multi-million shilling tenders in KNH and therefore you are uncomfortable that if she goes away, you lose your lucrative business. It is not the interest of the patients that is driving you. For God's sake, do not lie to Kenyans. You know, Bring us a different person from you, your community, you, a doctor. There are two things that Bonnie even even the previous uh, CEO, uh, one uh, Lesiampe, mm -hmm. if I remember his, his name, Richard Lesiampe, Rich, Richard okay. Lesiampe mm -hmm. is not a medical doctor. And one of the Big reasons, mistake. one 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 of the reasons why you should never make the mistake of appointing a doctor like Boni Halwale 
to head such an institution is that he will be biased at all times. Each and every time a doctor makes a mistake, you will never get fair trial. You've just seen Boni Alwale this morning so eloquently put blame on each and every member of staff from the cleaners to the nurses he jumped his colleague the doctors and went to the ceo do you expect that at any particular <laughs> time doctors will ever place their fellow colleague and say that you, you, you you're on the wrong secondly uh Dibal, this is a, a point of information that uh, dr boni alwale needs to know yes hospital management yes is now a course that it is taught at master's level in different universities across the world. So for you to come here and lie to the country that only a doctor can manage an institution the size of KNH, even the world best run hospitals are not <laughs> run by medical doctors. So it's really uh, unfortunate of you, right. Bonnie, if you hold that view. So, because so, okay. so can you tell us the qualifications of this lady you are defending? She has a master's in hospital administration. Yes. Of which university? Yes. Of which university? I know she studied in the UK. Not certain. Uh, I, I can't remember off my head. You know, I'm not a human resource officer to, to, to be knowing name by name. But I know she's a qualified administrator. If there are errors, you know, let me tell you. Uh, and this is where this is where we really lose this debate, uh, Dibal. When we place ourselves at the point where we say it is either you are for Lily Koros or not for Lily Koros, our argument has been totally different. I beg of you, my senior, Boni Halwale, to listen to me what, what, and the what, point what that I'm saying. The, line of the point is, yes. my line of thought, Dibal, is they are institutional challenges. And I'm so glad that Dr. Oluga this uh, KPMDU fellow has pointed it out uh, in, the, in the clip that you've just run. They are institutional challenges that are in KNH that cannot just be addressed by firing uh, the current CEO and hiring a new one. What you expect of a leadership, that is, this is the point that I had but of concern with, uh, with Madam Sisi. We expected to actually highlight these challenges. Because it, now, yeah, we don't know, you know unfortunately. Best. Please give me my time so that you understand my point. Okay. Then you can ask the question. Right, thank you. The point is this. Mm. When you have the kind of challenges that you have at uh, KNH, as a competent uh, minister who's taken an oath of office, what I expected Madam Cecily to have done is to call for an urgent meeting with the board of Kenyatta National <laughs> Hospital and listen to their side of the story. These are not idiots. Boni Halwale. It is not that the head of... Uh, Radiotherapy at KNH is a complete fool. He's your colleague and a doctor. I'm sure many at times he has requested and say, come on, we are using an outdated machine. But when you don't have an answer forthcoming from the ministry, how much can you do? You can only continue to use okay. Okay. what you, is you, available. You, you, you cannot right, talk for 10 minutes. This is supposed to be a discussion. Uh, my brother, let me tell you, I have no doubt when you tell me that uh, Madam Koros has got a master's in those things because you know her. If she has, she's one of those many professionals we have who are an incompetent. She has been trained, but she is not competent. If she was competent, she would not be making these glaring mistakes. You have pushed me to say something I didn't want to make here. But you know what is now coming, starting to eat you guys? The monster you guys nurtured for five years called tribalism, which helped you very well in the tyranny of numbers in pushing business in parliament has come back to eat you. What we are seeing is that now the challenging side of Jubilee is defending its staff and the Kikuyu side is being blamed. That animal is now starting to eat you you are going to defend every mistake done by any professional who was appointed under this uh, Jubilee government, so long as that appointment, appointee is from your side of government. Hmm. You are now faced with that monster. When we were telling you this monster was eating us who are outside the government, you were not feeling it. Now, the chickens have come home to roost. Nothing could be further from the truth. Okay. Because, let me tell you, uh, the, uh, and this is a point that I've made, if uh, the CEO of uh, Kenyatta National Hospital, never mind the tribe that they came from, had been, uh, this kind of injustice has been meted mm -hmm. on them, where a minister just walks into your office and without seeking your side of the story, never mind that there have been a two-month 
sustained campaign to tarnish the name of uh, this lady. You remember the case of the, of the rape claims where in broad daylight, even the senator for Nairobi offered mm. to help and said, please, if you have been a victim of this thing that you are hearing, come to my office. I will offer you protection. Not a single person has ever turned up to date. Two months back, your cameras kept on running at KNH and saying there has been a patient who has been at casualty for the last 24 hours without being attended. They went round the 10 floors of the hospital. That patient couldn't be traced. But, but do you think it's so easy for you any know, woman who has actually gone through the harrowing teacher of rape to actually just please. show up and say, you know, I mean, notwithstanding the ostracization that will come with that, you know, the, the, you know this, the, the sort of you know, uh, unfairness and the shame that you are subjected to. But, yeah? but, but the senator has not said... The stigmatization he's got, he's got, really is, a, is a Listen, with rape. this is an elected leader for crying out loud. You have the police, you have said, okay, we don't want to report to police. He said, please, I will p provide the protection. They are not going to display you in the, uh, uh, in the, in the public uh, eye. I have said they want to listen to your case so that they offer the help that is needed. <coughs> Are you now? I think are you now justifying and saying no, no, no. that I think, I think Senator, there isn't such a possibility? Senator, no, Senator, yes. Senator, let us speak for the patient who has been raped. Do you know any? I'm saying. We Do you know any Bonnie? Yeah, can I? No. Can let let can I finish. finish, sir. No. You you are angry. Don't be angry. I'm not angry, but Bonnie. Then relax. Good. Even you, you need to relax okay. because my point is. I am. I'm perfect. You can even see how I'm holding myself. If you are relaxed, it is not a joke for a woman to be raped. Nobody has said it is. Yes. Just let me finish. And Please. it would be expecting too much for any woman who has been raped to go in broad daylight and say, I was raped. Who has asked them to, to show up in broad daylight? OK. No, would would, would you allow me to make my statement? So that we know where he's Be headed. calm. Be calm. You know, because there is know, something called social stigma. That thing, to some, people, victims of rape, is worse than the actual being raped. So they would rather they live with the shame of having been raped than to go public and say, I've been raped. There are many women who are raped by mad people. They go ahead and carry, carry babies fathered by these mad people, but the women would rather not talk about it. The stigma is too much. So to say that the senator of Nairobi, who in good intentions wanted to do something, was going to offer a solution simply by saying, come to me, I will protect you. Who is he? You know, uh, right. the, the, the point that uh, I keep on trying to raise, but it's extremely uh, difficult to carry out uh, this kind of a debate when you guys have clogged your mind and have refused to see objectively into this matter and have said that for all intents and purposes, for every patient that has an issue, for all the challenges that are being witnessed, never mind the cases of underfunding, never mind the cases of under understaffing, all we need to do is that if you fire uh, the CEO and get a new one, I can assure you, even you, uh, Dr. Boni Halwale, I dare you today, you're a medical doctor. Go and be the CEO of KNH. Let us if, see. If, let if, us see the change that you can bring. Let me tell you, my There's brother. There's absolutely nothing you can do with that system. My brother, you have known me. Uh, you haven't known me long enough. I've been in public service for 20 years as a as a political leader, and a few more years when you add the other doctor. The other years I was working as as a doctor before I I went into politics. Mm -hmm. If I am the CEO of Kenyatta National Hospital. And patients are raped by my staff who work at the mortuary. And I'm unable to do anything about it. I can assure you, I would resign. So Koros should have resigned. <laughs> you know, talk is cheap, Bonnie. Talk is cheap, Bonnie. Let when, me tell if, you why if, it's not cheap if, if, coming from me. If, if, let, me, let me tell you why right. it's not cheap coming from it's me. It's 7 on the nose. We need to take a short break. Uh, Bonnie Hazwale and uh, Senator Chiriot, of course, uh, heat a debate here on <laughs> AM Live on... The systemic failure of KNH, and of course we shall be drilling Systemic. Deeper. In fact, that's yeah, the, the yeah, word. Or, or, systemic. Or, 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 or yeah, but you've well. been refusing and saying that it's, it's, it's a CEO's problem. problem. That's the, the point debate. I've been making all morning. That it's a systemic failure. And the conversation continues apace here with our panelist, Dr. Boni Halwale, who is the deputy leader of Ford Kenya. Also, Senator Aaron Chiriot, who is a senator from Kericho.
we got an apology from Senator Kimano Matangi, who was delayed in Mombasa. Of course, lo, uh, most of the legislators are in Mombasa, as well as Dr. Otende Molo is in Mombasa, and Jared Okello also is in Mombasa because of the induction for the MPs that is ongoing from, uh, of course, yesterday until Friday. But we continue the conversation. Remember, also, you can call in, ask questions, or share your contribution as well. And uh, we'll be also uh, highlighting some of your tweets from our Twitter handle, which is AM Live NTV. Also, you can cross over to our profile and name on Facebook, which is AM Live NTV, and 20505 is our SMS portal. Right, before we took a short break, Bone uh, Khalwale, you were actually uh, to tell us more about uh, uh, the Kenyatta National Hospital and its systemic failure. What is the way forward? You say that uh, you don't see your chorus should not be reinstated, right? Uh, absolutely. Of course, so, I do not know her personally, but we keep on being uh, alerted and informed about her performance. She is not competent, and because she's not the only daughter of the Republic of Kenya with the kind of education and background that she has, let us look for somebody else. All right, well, which set it is a question of who should take the responsibility the highest responsibility sits with the CEO, period, at Kenyatta National Hospital. Because Nas Kenyatta National Hospital is an institution. Right. So the person at the apex, if she's uh, not able, the back should stop with her. We stop with her. Yes. So, uh, S Senator Chariot, as we're winding up on this, do you think then that the Cabinet Secretary Ministry of Health acted in the wisest of fashion in suspending Koros? Well, she has her own uh, reasons why she thought this was a, a bright book. But now, that is a host that has already bolted. Because it doesn't matter how much we argue whether she was Do wrong. Do you think right. she, she acted in no, the No, I have made my point. You, you know, I, uh, that's what I addressed on Saturday. I've repeated the same this morning. That her decision was rash and uh, not well thought out. But now that she has made it, the thing, the proper thing to do is, I've been told, she said she has set up a committee to carry out... Uh, uh, investigation. extensive investigations. Mm -hmm. I hope the investigations will reveal to us whether for sure Madam uh, Lily Koros is competent or incompetent as, as claimed by Boni Halwale than uh, the kind of institutional challenges that uh, KNH is facing and give us a way forward because it's really unfortunate. I myself, I know uh, Kenyatta National Hospital. I've been a patient there. I've been operated on those very theatres that you are debating this morning. So it's not something that I treat so casually. I understand the pain of Kenyans. I know when you speak about, uh, uh, about uh, that radiotherapy machine, I know it because I've taken my own family to that, uh, to that machine and I've seen where the, uh, the register book, where you, the earliest you can get those services is six months down the line. By the time you're coming back to access those yeah, services, yeah, yeah. cancer has finished you. Mm -hmm. So there are serious uh, challenges that this hospital is facing that are far beyond the reach of a CEO. It is my sincere hope that um, this task force that this task force that has been set up by uh, the cabinet secretary will give us a way forward and show direction point the country forward and say Thank you. if you want a proper uh, running referral hospital then this and this is what needs to be done doesn't this really highlight also you know the issue of corporate governance that maybe it's systemic also in this country that uh, a lot of things need to be done as far as governance is concerned you know holistically you know institutions this could be uh, Kenyatta National Hospital today, epitomizing, you know, the rot, uh, mark and mire that is within institutions as far as, you know, management is concerned. Tomorrow it might be another one. Of yes. course, we've had uh, the privatization of sugar. We're going to be talking about sector as well. Uh, this is an issue of corporate governance at the end of the day. The common thread that runs through all these institutions is the monster of corruption. If you go in the sugar industry, you go to KQ, you go to Kenyatta National Hospital, you go to any other institution, the problem is corruption. And I was surprised that when the president singled out his top four agenda items that he wants to focus on, that he didn't see the need for him to put it that for me to achieve this, I must slay the monster of corruption. So he'll go ahead and put those four agenda items, but for as long as there is corruption, yes. he's not going to move. So I'm responding to you by telling you mm -hmm. that yes, governance problems, 
are there in many of the institutions, but the real reason is because of corruption. Senator Geruyot has cleverly avoided, I've tried to give it to him, but he doesn't want to respond. The problem at KNH is competition for tenders. So CEOs are taken there to help some shadowy people, some shadowy figures to have access to lucrative tenders. If we can fix corruption, then things will be far, far much better. And I want to end my comment having congratulated the minister for having interdicted this uh, officer. Not to stop there, she should now move with speed and address these simple things. You don't need uh, a, a task force. Mm -hmm. These are obvious things of decongested Kenyatta National Hospital, hire members, more members of staff, put there a professional who is competent, the, pro the professional with the technical know-how. You know, you, 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 you take Cheriot there, he has never run even a, a, a dispensary, a health center. You put there a guy with that track record, plus the kind of uh, specialized training that uh, the senator is talking about, and you'll fix Kenyatta National Hospital. Let me give a case study. The issue of raping of patients by mortuary attendants. Mm -hmm. I don't need three days. I don't need a week. I need only one day to fix that problem of patients being raped. Patients are raped at night by mortuary attendants. So step one, make sure that nobody, no dead body is c collected from the, 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 the wards at night. Let the bodies be collected from 6 a.m. in the morning. What do you do? You create a room on the sides where patients who have died overnight can be wheeled in to wait to be taken away in the morning. Two, mothers are raped on their way to go and breastfeed the babies. You must make sure that babies who are in the nursery sleep next to the mothers. Where they are supposed to be breastfed should not be far off. Those are things that don't require anything. It just requires a sensible person who understands the running of a hospital. And then finally, you, you, you can then go into the mortuary and find the, the culprit. Mm -hmm. Not all the mortuary attendants are rapists, but they know each other. When a rape case takes place on a particular night, the person who was on duty is known. That person is stopped from working. It's as simple as that. Nothing complex. I don't have to go to the University of Harvard to train in management in order to be able to fix the problem at Kenyatta Hospital. All right, your closing statement on uh, Kenyatta National Hospital, very briefly. You know, that is yeah. a dodge, uh, Bonnie, because... Yes. <laughs> Why is it a dodge? <laughs> because yes. what if... And this is exactly what happened. As CEO, Dr. Bonnie Alwale, you've called out and say, for sure we've heard about this uh, rape incident. Yes. You try and check on the CCTVs, you don't get it. But they, those CCTVs work, eh? So don't put an argument for them not to work. They work because <coughs> last week when that baby was stolen, the police were able to retrieve the, foot, the footage from the CCTV and that is how they were able to apprehend the suspect. So those CCTVs work. But in this instance, during the, the alleged uh, rape saga, they tried checking for the same, they couldn't find. Secondly, you've called for witness and said if you have witnessed this incident or have been a, a, a victim, nobody shows up.